Hi, I'm Dave Cross. Welcome to this class on working non-destructively or the non-destructive workflow if you prefer. In this class, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of ways we can work non-destructively. Now, as if you've used Photoshop for more than three minutes, you already know there's multiple ways to do things in Photoshop. The reason that I try to lean towards working in this non-destructive manner as much as possible, actually there's a number of reasons. And the one that I think most people think about, at least at first, is being able to change your mind. In fact, I had a conversation once with another Photoshop instructor and he was, we were having a conversation, he was playing devil's advocate and saying, why would I bother working non-destructively? I never change my mind when I'm working on an image. And my response was to say that changing your mind is just one small part of it. That's certainly a nice plus, but here's the, some of the other reasons why I think it's important. And let's talk first of all about changing your mind, because that is certainly a factor. Part of the reason I love the ability to change my mind is not if I make a mistake, but it frees me up to experiment. In other words, in normal Photoshop, if you do steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's pretty difficult in normal methods to go back to like step three and remove it without having to start all over again. Whereas if you work non-destructively, it kind of removes that linear aspect of working in Photoshop and lets you do 15 things and then at any time go back to that filter you did in step three and change it. So for me, it's a big part of being more flexible and, and really being able to experiment. So that's one thing. The second thing is just accuracy. There are plenty of situations where I watch people and they're painstakingly trying to paint on a mask or something to make a subtle change. And my reaction is, why wouldn't you deliberately overdo something so you can come back and change it later once you know it's accurate? And we'll be seeing examples of all of these things. The other reason that I like working non-destructively is repurposing. There are times where I've worked on a project and I realize portions of that I could reuse somewhere else. And if they're done in ways like smart filters and adjustment layers, it's a whole lot easier to do that. And the other reason, and, and this used to happen to me more often when I didn't use all these methods, and frankly, when some of them didn't even exist, and maybe this has happened to you where you've been in a kind of experimental slash play mode, and you try all these things, and then you, you like what you have, you save it, you come back later, and you open a file that's got really no information, and you look at it and go, how on earth did I do that? Because there's really nothing for you to be able to, to look at and tell you how you did it. So the other aspect of working non-destructively that I really like is it has kind of that reverse engineering aspect where you can look at a document much later and see what kind of, how you did it. You can look at smart filters and adjustment layers and not only be able to tweak them, but also just kind of figure out how you did it. So let me show you an example of what I mean. Here's a project that I worked on and I'm very happy with it. I've got a bunch of things going on here, but all I have here in the layers panel just says background. So this is a JPEG and I really can't tell, I mean, I can guess that certainly there's obviously multiple layers and it looks like there might be a texture, but I really don't know. I'd much rather have a file like this where I can look through and go, okay, so there's a layer there, it's got something happening, and I got layers with masks, there's a smart filter, there's another smart filter. So I can look, look at this and kind of figure how I did it. And even if I want to see specifically, like apparently I did a motion blur filter here, well let's see if I double click on it, it tells me this is exactly the settings you used. So from that perspective, that's a huge plus to me is having that ability. And look at this example here. I'd much rather have this scenario where I have a layer, let's get a little closer here, and I can see this symbol, we'll talk later on about camera raw smart objects, but this is a smart object, which means I can edit it. It has a layer mask, which means I can edit it. And maybe it might also have a smart filter. I'd much rather have that situation than this one, where the final result looks okay, but if I look at that layer by itself, Everything has been erased and deleted and there's really not much I can do about it. So given the choice, I'd much rather have the version where I could look at it and kind of go, okay, I, I can see that I still have the ability to edit all of these pieces of it for all those reasons we talked about before, not the least of which is accuracy and, and flexibility and all those good things. So just before we jump in too far, let me show you just a couple of simple examples of the, the kind of mindset that I suggest that we have. And I'm going to assume for a moment that 
you are familiar with the basic concepts of layers. I'm not going to introduce layers and what they do, so I'm going to assume you already kind of have that figured out. And that suggests that, for example, in this scenario, I have a background layer. I wouldn't just paint directly on it. So let's say I wanted to create a semi-see-through white box. So I would create a new layer, take my marquee selection tool and say, over here, I want to fill this with white that's, that's semi-see-through. Now, this is one of the, the phrases that you'll hear me use over and over again, probably to the point you'll be tired of it, and that's end up with. So I use that to remind myself, I want to end up with a semi-see-through white box. What do I mean by that? Well, here's exactly what I mean. If I simply went to the fill command and said, let's use white and make it 60% see-through and hit OK, that's now my ceiling. In other words, I can't ever go back to this and say, I wish I'd made it 75 because it would be really difficult. I mean, it's possible, but it'd be really difficult for me to somehow turn that into 75%. So instead, if I undo that, my approach would be to choose fill and then fill it at 100% and use the layers panel to put it to whatever percentage I want. So the net result is the same, but there's a very important difference, and that is as long as I save this as a PSD file, another phrase you'll hear me say a thousand times during this class, as long as I save it as a PSD, it preserves exactly this, which means I have this box on a layer that if I decide later on, maybe after I print it or save it out as a graphic, that I now want it to be 72%, I can come back here to the layers panel and push it up higher. So by doing everything initially at 100%, and that includes using brushes and things like that, most of the time, there will be exceptions of course, but most of the time, at least if you go in thinking with that philosophy of end up with, then that reminds you that it's often better to go a little bit more than you need and then pull it back just to give you that ability to try something different and of course to change your mind. The other aspect, as I mentioned, is this idea to repurpose. So not that this is a great example, but let's just say for the sake of argument that I now decide, heck, I need that same white box on this other document. The fact that it is in a separate layer means I do have the ability to drop it into a different document and still tweak it. So if I need to make changes to it, I still can. And that just saves me from having to start all over again. So that's kind of the, the approach that I'm taking throughout this class is save time, be more accurate, be more creative, and reverse engineer. That, those are all the reasons why we work non-destructively. And throughout each lesson in this class, we'll look at different examples of how to do that.